Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing cha-ching number 73. So uh, last couple of cha-chings I did were all Christmas related, so I'm going to start getting back into just regular cha-chings. Uh, so this one here had a lot of um, higher priced items in, so I am anxious to share with you guys uh, some of the things that I have been selling. So the first thing that we have is an old... Um, cast iron chocolate mold this one made um little imprints of puss in boots so a little cat in a um boot and eric won a bunch of these at uh, an auction um i can't remember exactly what we paid for them off the top of my head right this minute but it was one of those things that we had never tried selling before uh, but wanted to just take a chance that kind of thing we saw that they were you know some of them were selling pretty good um this one sold for $149.99 I know Eric was just saying the other day he's kind of kicking himself for not buying more of them but at the time we were picking up more of the um, not necessarily obscure, but more interesting ones than, you know, some of the, what we would, were considering regular looking ones. So that was a really good sale. Next item we have is a vintage um, Halloween cassette tape. This was called Chamber of Horrors. So basically it was just a cassette tape that played like spooky sounds and noises and that type of thing that you could play during like a Halloween party. I actually had this when I was younger. So when I saw it while I was out and about, I knew that it was an older item. And that sold for $19.99 and I probably paid about a quarter to 50 cents for that. Next we have a Sack Roots wristlet. I purchased this at a fill -a bag rummage sale and that sold for $12.99. I do have a Department 56 Halloween ornament. This one was a Spooky Pets ornament and it was of a cricket. Really, really cute. That sold for $25.99. This next item was a Furby Connect. Um, this here I purchased, Eric and I, we got two of these at a yard sale. And I think we might have paid, um, I want to say $40 or so for it at the yard sale. It was brand new, still sealed. Um, that sold for $159.99. So these obviously sell well but um you know they're gonna sell better if they're still sealed in their original boxes and the interesting thing about this one is that it did go to a studio in los angeles california um so i don't know if it is going to be on a tv show or anything like that or maybe just in like a print ad to something or on a blog i have no idea but the studio like you could kind of like rent it out to um, do photography and videos and stuff like that. So I'm just not quite sure, you know, where where that is going to be seen type of thing. Uh, next item we have is a vintage Cody cologne in the scent Avatar. So I found this at a yard sale um, this past summer. You guys remember um, me picking this up. I think I paid 50 cents for it and ended up looking it up and was just blown away with what they were selling for. That sold for a hundred and eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Absolutely insane. <laughs> insane. Uh, next we have a little vintage left in ceramic girl. She was wearing a yellow dress. Um, I can't remember exactly where she came from. I feel like she might have been in a, um, fill -a bag rummage sale as well. She sold for $12.99. This next item I did have for a little while. I picked it up at a yard sale. It was a vintage from 1981 strawberry shortcake figure of the purple pie man. Basically, it was just a figure that you could paint. Um, but it was still in its original packaging, never actually painted on. Um, I'd say I spent maybe two, three dollars on that and it sold for $27.99. 
This next item did go to a subscriber, also named Michelle, and it was a Victoria's Secret bombshell perfume that sold for $17.99. I did get that at a yard sale, and I think I paid $2 for it. Uh, next, we have a vintage California raisins hanky um, handkerchief. This came from a fill -a bag rummage sale, I do believe, and that sold for $12.99. Next item was a vintage little girl's jewelry box. It had an angel print on it. So just one of those like cardboard style jewelry boxes that have the little ballerina inside when you open it up that spins and plays music. That sold for $19.99 and I'm pretty sure I got that at a yard sale as well. Probably paid a dollar for it. Next, we have a set of four Mikasa mugs. These all had a lighthouse print on them. Eric and I picked these up at Goodwill. We had them for a very long time, very long time. They finally did sell for $45.99. Next was a vintage Panasonic micro cassette voice recorder. I got this at a yard sale. Unfortunately, it was opened. Um, I had once found a sealed one that sold for a very decent amount. This one still sold well. Um, people do use these a lot. They're very sought after electronic items. This sold for $59.99 and I'm pretty sure I paid just $1 for that at the yard sale. Next item I have is a blue um, genie looking wine glass decanter. This came on a tray that, of stuff that I won at an auction. There was um, a little bit of an issue with it on the stopper. Um, the top of the stopper um, did have a chip on it. But that still sold um, for $19.99. Next item did go to a subscriber named Susan. This was a Grateful Dead beanie bear. I picked the, I, it was three of them that I got at a yard sale and I'm pretty sure they were $2 a piece. I want to say this one was for the sailor bear and that sold for $19.99. Next item also came from a yard sale. This was a little tiny mirror. I think it measured like four inches and it just had this really pretty um, jewel type look to it. It was by someone named Sam Fink. Um, I'm pretty sure I paid 50 cents for it, potentially a dollar, and that sold for $19.99. Next was that old coal mining canary birdcage that I won at an auction. Um, so basically when I won this, I didn't fully understand what it was, but I knew that they had a tendency to sell pretty well. So basically, um, you know, back in the coal mining days where um, the miners would take down a bird in a cage and it, they like the birds would detect any kind of harmful gases before it could you know affect the the men down there like the bird would die first basically and that would give them a chance to escape um, from the dangerous fumes and I mean it's a very <laughs> morbid thing absolutely horrible to think about um, but anyway I won this bird cage at the auction. I think I spent maybe 10 to 15 dollars for it and it sold for 69 dollars and 99 cents. Funnily enough, um, not that long ago another one came up at the auction and unfortunately I couldn't win that one. Um, so someone else at that time knew what it was as well because I wasn't able to get it at a decent enough price to resell it. Uh, next item also came from an auction. This was a really good one and I didn't know who it was made by at the time uh, but this was by someone named Aldo Wandi. It is a Batosi piece. It was this yellow pedestal type of bowl. What I did was I found it on worth point but at the time I did not have a worth point account so I ended up um 
subscribing to worth points so i could see what this thing sold for and i found out that it last sold for two hundred dollars so i'm so thankful and ever since then i've kept my worth point account and it has come in handy so many times um where it's helping me to make more money because i'm able to see what things have sold for and their potential worth so this here i'm pretty sure i spent less than ten dollars for it because i don't think other people knew who it was made by either anyway it sold for $199.99, so that was an amazing sale and really turned me on to work point. Um, next we have a Givenchy polo. I got this at a fill -a bag rummage sale. It had like a golf themed print all over it. It still had its original tags, so um, but it was an older clothing piece. And that sold for $49.99, so that was a good find. Uh, next we have, this is also another case of I didn't know really what I had at the time. This was a ceramic um, WG White London is what it was marked. I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was a really cool jar. It had like a screw top lid, very heavy, nicely made. I liked the print on it and I'm pretty sure it was a quarter or 50 cents at the yard sale. So I was like, whatever, I'm going to buy this. I think it's neat. Well, come to find out it was actually a caviar crock is what they are called. And they were worth a decent amount. So I ended up selling that one for $49 and 99 cents. Um, let's see. Next item we have is a vintage toy. This is from 1995. It was by Tenko. Um, Guardians of Magic Snow Leopard. Eric won this at an auction for one dollar. Um, so it was kind of a no-brainer of a vintage toy still sealed in its original packaging for a buck, you know. Um, and we ended up selling that for $39.99. Next, two items went to the same person. These were two older hard candy makeup items. So these hard candy makeup items were really popular back in like the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, I know that because they belonged to me when I was younger. Uh, so the first one was a single eyeshadow in the shade Sour Apple that sold for $11.99. And the other item was called the Princess Palette and it had different eyeshadows in and some lip products and a highlighter and stuff like that. And that sold for $18.99. People really do seem to um, get into the whole Y2K type of thing. So um, that's no exception with makeup as well. They like the clothes and that type of thing. But they also like the, the makeup looks that they're going to be able to get with, you know, some of the older products. Uh, next we have a vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pillowcase. This was just for one single pillowcase. I picked this up at a fill -a bag rummage sale and that sold for $19.99. I sold a pair of Mary Jane style sneakers by a company called Drew. I had never heard of this brand before. I found these at Goodwill. Probably paid about $7.47 because that's what my Goodwill charges for shoes. Um, and those sold for $39.99. Next item was a bar of soap by La Ossetan, and it was in the scent Peony, and that sold for $13.99. And I got that at a yard sale, and again, I probably paid $0.50 cents for it. Um, next item was a vintage children's book uh, based off of Tom Edison, and that sold for $7.99. That came from a box of um, records and books that Eric and I won at the auction. I think a set of records from that same box is also in this cha-ching. And you've been seeing them in various other cha-chings as well. I think that box did pretty well. Next item was an older candies body spray in the scent Sugar Plum. I got this at a thrift store probably paid about a dollar for a dollar ninety nine and that sold for forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents I sold a this took a while to sell and that surprises me because I thought this thing was so cute it was a piggy 
piggy bank and it had this like floral kind of decoupaged cloth all over it i thought it was absolutely beautiful but it took forever to sell i think i did pick that up potentially a fill bag rummage sale or a yard sale and that sold for $15.99. Next we have a crab tote by a company called Spartina. This still had its original tag on. I got this at a yard sale for $5 and that sold for $49.99. I just love the look of it and it would be perfect to use as like a beach bag tote. Next was a purse by a company called Danielle Nicole. I had this purse for quite a while. I won it in a box full of just random various purses from an auction. Um, I think I only wanted the box specifically for a coach purse, but I did end up listing some of the other purses and this was one of them, but it did take a while to sell. Um, but that did sell for $18.99. And speaking of those old children's records, this was a lot of three Mickey Mouse Club um, records that sold for $12.99 and they came from that same box from the auction with the other records and books. I sold a set of vintage green wooden dollhouse furniture pieces. Um, I can't remember exactly where I got these. I think that they were in, I had gotten like this big bag full of like old Barbie stuff and like Barbie accessories, but there was other like random stuff mixed in. And I think these dollhouse furniture pieces were mixed in there as well. I put those up on auction and they sold for $19.49. I like to pick up dollhouse furniture when I see it. I feel like it does tend to sell. Not always for like a ton of money or anything like that, but when you're only paying like a quarter for it and stuff like that, then I definitely feel like it's worth picking up. Big girl wants to say hello. My baby wants to say hi. Big girl hi. wants to say hello. She's like hi, twice hi, the size baby. that she was. Hi, baby. She seems bigger. Here we go. She don't what know you doing? She don't know the look she of the don't camera. know what's going on. She just wants to give kisses, don't she? being a good girl. Yes, you Say are. Say cha-ching. Cha-ching! Let me kiss. Who just want to give kisses? Okay, I take her back. No. You probably hear her barking in the background. No. She's being ornery. <laughs> oh, baby. Go put the daddy. She's like, no, I just come to mama. Oh. <laughs> all right so the next item we have is a hello kitty plush i thought she was so cute she was dressed up as like a little hawaiian hula girl but the really cute thing about her was that she looked like she was tan like she had been laying out in the sunshine i found her at a yard sale and it wasn't priced and i remember thinking like well this probably isn't any more than a dollar because typically you know stuffed animals at yard sales are like a dollar or less and she ended up being two dollars so had i known that i don't know if i would have purchased her or not but regardless she sold for fourteen dollars and 99 cents next item was a set of two angry birds kind of like bean bag filled um plushes these were on the smaller side that sold for nineteen dollars and 99 cents and i got those at goodwill and they came in a pack of two i think i still have one more pack listed and i'm pretty sure i paid like a dollar 99 for those next we have a victoria's secret lingerie travel bag so this would be something that you could take along with you when you're traveling to put your you know nicer pieces of lingerie in i picked this up at a yard sale and i'm pretty sure i paid 50 cents for it and that sold for 19 dollars and 99 cents this next item was an old glass swizzle stick like drink stir that had an advertisement on for a club called jimmy kelly so this was a club that would have been in new york city um, you know, back in the day, basically. And that sold for $9.99. I did get like a cup full of these glass swizzle sticks at an auction, and I did sell some of them. Uh, next item we have is a Sony Explode boombox. Eric and I won this at an auction. I think we paid probably less than $20 for it. And that sold for $119.99. And I do have something to talk about that at the end of this video. Uh, next item we have is another cologne. This one was by Salvador Dali. 
That sold for $39.99 and I got that at a yard sale as well for probably a dollar. Next item also came from a yard sale. This one was a really cool piece. I thought this was super interesting. This was a white ceramic tribal, um, just like plate. You could hang it. I remember there was like a thing on the back where you could hang it or obviously just sit it down and that kind of thing. I can't remember what I paid for it. I know I had it like bundled with a bunch of other stuff. So in the grand scheme of things, probably paid a dollar to two dollars for it. And that sold for $28.99. I sold a pair of Mary Jane shoes by Naote. And those sold for $39.99. And these, I don't remember if they came from um, a yard sale or a um, church sale. One or the other. But I'd say I spent between 2 to $5 on those. And those sold for $39.99 dollars and 99 cents which I'm pretty sure I already just said uh, next we have a vintage from 1993 this was called a division magic map basically it's just like a little kind of like a toy where it gives you the um, division on it I know they do like addition subtraction multiplication this one was for division and then when you push down the button it tells you it shows you the answer underneath of it um, so I put homeschooling in my title for, you know, people who do homeschool, but it's also just, you know, like a, an interesting enough toy, um, that you can learn your division with. And that sold for $12.99. Pretty sure I picked that up at Goodwill and I probably paid about $1.99 for it. The last thing that I have for this cha-ching was a German teacup. This did go to a subscriber named Adrian. Um, I've kind of still behind on my cha-ching so this one was a little bit of a newer item like recently that I had sold but yeah so that went to Adrian so I hope you enjoyed your teacup and that sold for $19.99 and that did come from a tray of other random teacups that I won at an auction so that is everything for this particular cha-ching um at the end of the video, I tend to talk about anything that, you know, has happened recently on eBay. So we are in January now. Um, hopefully everyone had a really good um, sales for Christmas in December. I think that, you know, I was doing really, really well. Um, in December and I'm hoping that sales continue obviously to just keep keep going good um so the issue that I had within this judging was with that Sony boombox um that item went GSP so basically someone from out of the country won the boom box and when you ship something through GSP it first goes to a warehouse here in the US and eBay is the one who fills out all the customs forms and that type of thing and then they're the ones to ship it on to the buyer so you're not physically shipping the item to the buyer yourself you're just shipping the item to eBay's warehouse so the Stereo got to the warehouse fine and everything like that. It got to the customer fine. Um, when the buyer got it, they wanted to return it. And typically when it comes to returns through GSP, I feel like a lot of people just don't feel like it's worth the hassle of having to find a shipping label and buying a shipping label um, to give to someone that's, you know, in another country, it's pretty well impossible, right? So a lot of people don't ex accept the returns. They just automatically, you know, will refund the buyer basically. But this was a really expensive item and I wasn't comfortable just letting that money go basically. So I had them ship it back to me. And well, <laughs> I guess luck was either not on my side or on my side when it came to this boom box because when they shipped it back, they did not ship it to my address. 
they shipped it to some place in North Carolina, I want to say, or South Carolina, one of the Carolinas, and that's not where I live, um, and that wouldn't have been on, you know, a return shipping, even if they were shipping back to, like, the eBay warehouse, because when I ship to GSP, to the eBay warehouse, it goes to Kentucky. I'm not sure if Kentucky is the only place it goes or if eBay has multiple warehouses, I'm not sure. But anyway, the buyer did not ship the, the boombox back to me. Um, so I'm kind of like freaking out, like what is going on? Like how am I ever going to get this to get this back like I don't want to refund someone when I didn't even get the item back kind of thing so I got in touch with eBay uh, personally and then I also got on eBay um, Facebook eBay for business on Facebook and I talked to someone there as well and since the item was not returned to me I didn't have to worry about anything eBay let me keep my money um I don't know I'm assuming that the buyer did still get refunded somehow maybe or maybe it was all on them because they didn't ship it to the correct address I'm really not sure what happened on their end as far as that goes but I just know on my end I wasn't at fault for anything and you know eBay allowed me to keep my money from the sale so i never did get the boom box back so someone got a boom box somewhere in north carolina or south carolina or it'll be in one of those like um lost um mail kind of auctions type of thing but uh so that that was kind of kind of gave me a mini heart attack at the time thinking that like i was going to be out both the boom box and the money um, that I had gotten for it, but it all ended up working out okay. So that's just one of those things. Um, you know, GSP, I don't mind shipping through GSP. I know a lot of people, you know, are just hesitant about it, but I mean, so far I haven't really had any kind of horror stories related to GSP and that type of thing. eBay tends to, you know, stand behind stand behind you, especially if you're a reputable seller. So, um, yeah, I will continue to ship GSP. Um, but yeah, that is pretty well the only problem I had within all of this cha-ching. So you guys have to let me know if like anything like that has ever happened to you, regardless if it was a GSP order or not, where like someone returned something and sent it to a completely different address than, you know, your address. Um, but that is everything really for this cha-ching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You'll have to let me know what you thought down in the comments, and I will see you next time.